to And Here's Modi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to be in the studio again. I know. I feel like it's been forever. Right? I think we did like two in a row or something yeah. every week, so we took a week off. But since I've seen you, we've been, since we've been here, you, we did your show, your birthday show, which was so much fun. I know. That was amazing. It was such a cute show. It was such a nice lineup. Everybody came out. Everybody. Came and uh, your husband was in the front row over there. Uh, He's co- He comes to like every show. Oh, that's great. I know. It's very nice. He enjoys him. it? Uh, I'm not sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, obviously he does if he's in, if he's coming. Otherwise, he would just say this is a great time to stay home. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he enjoys it. Yeah. No, it was very very sweet, and uh, just Thank to you. watch you on stage is fun. It's a fun show. I was really happy to have you there. Yeah, it was it was really exciting. My parents were just in heaven. Oh, the, your parents were there? Yeah, my parents were there. Oh, I didn't remember seeing them. Really? Maybe I haven't No, I stayed. I did my set. I stayed for a little bit of Rachel Feinstein's yeah. act, and then we left, and that She's was hysterical. it. She's hysterical. Um, my mother loves you. Oh, I love her then. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, and, and you uh, just were in Skokie. That I looked was amazing. In Skokie with this beautiful theater, the North Shore uh, Center of the Performing Arts. On a Tuesday night, huge show up. It was really amazing. Um, it is just so much fun to do a theater. And, you know, I do the Yoeli opening up for me, my Hasidic character. And uh, and it's now it has, like, sound p- uh, production. It's not just a guy with a microphone. Now there's, like, we've added all kinds of... Um, What's it called? Uh, uh, Graphics Mm -hmm. and uh, and music, and it's really, really it came together. And uh, the yearly character now it's like its third time performing, and it's really fun. Is he the only like Hasidic stands up comic? No, there's Hasidic guys who are real people who are Hasidim that do stand up. They do it in Yiddish. Um, I've seen some. It's not amazing. (laughs) <laughs> um and uh but this is you know a Hasidic character doing stand up and it was like I did you know the b- the best thing that Yerli does is when he does the um when he does the reviews of television shows and I did American Pickers I don't know if you've ever seen that what on the hist- that? What H- it? History Channel. No. Those guys who drive around America and they they go to people's barns and garages oh, and amazing. and they and I just like imagine a Hasidic guy looking at these <laughs> goyim. Uh, buying, <laughs> trying to buy garbage from other goyim. It's just such an amazing, co- and people were loving it, and it was just, it was great. And then I just, you know, people from the audience, what was doing, there was a, a there was a, a, you know, sometimes you just get great lines out of nowhere. There was this one family that was celebrating the graduation of one son who was an MBA and one son who was a CPA, and I said, oh great, one can make the money and one can hide the money. <laughs> <laughs> But all in the Hasidic <laughs> character, so it was really good. Um, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, Skokie was amazing, and I flew back, landed, and I had a nice corporate gig out in Princeton, New Jersey, so it was wiped out. Um, but it's a good wipeout. It's fun when you're working and you're, you know, and Leo came with me, and it was great, so it was just, um, I had, the, it was really good. It was a lot of fun. I spoke to you on the way to Jersey. I was like, oh, what are you guys doing in Jersey? I'm like, you, literally, on a Wednesday night, she's asking, what are you guys doing in Jersey? We're, we're, we're you know, we're looking, this is the best time of the year to look at the highways. <laughs> That's what the, you said. the foliage <laughs> on the highways. This is what we're... <laughs> I go to Jersey when I ha- no, it's not true. New Jersey has beautiful places. We go to like Deal and all that too. But so, but um, it was a great gig last night, and it was um, so weird doing these corporate gigs. It's so important to see what happens before you go on. My, I did forty minutes last night. Yeah. And I'm telling you, twenty minutes was just of the speakers, me having fun with what happened before before I went on the speakers and the awards and the people. You know, it's. It's just like that's the most important thing when you do those types of events. Was it a disease? It wasn't. It was a it was a healthcare <laughs> company that has uh, you know half the, half the room was Orthodox Jews and the other half was just everything. And right. they work in health management and they own nursing homes and all these facilities and uh, this was their annual. Uh, event. It was a big event. A lot of production value. The stage looked like a, like a, like a special. It was that's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. And um, you know, that's 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 
bread and butter kind of uh, it's that's good. Your, that's part of your magic though because you can I've seen you do it like you bounce between like the Hasidic like the Orthodox and then just everything well look you couldn't do any Jewish material I did the regular material because they don't they're not going to get jokes about shivers and all that um, so I did the, and then the Orthodox like oh wow we've, we've never seen this act this oh, is great. Wow. Like, I've never seen. It's all clean. It's all clean, and it's all, uh, you know, just it's easy and respectful to everybody, but fun. And obviously, the more inside stuff I have on the company, the the, the better the event is. Right. In these types of events, and um, and now we're back in the studio, and we have a guest that is. I'm so happy that you're here. Aww. I've been looking forward to this so so much. <laughs> We have Sheba Mason in the studio with us today. Beautiful blonde hair, uh, red <laughs> lipstick, and uh, and just one of the sweetest people I know. I've, I've known you for, I think I've known you since you've been you began doing comedy. Yeah, yeah, many years. What? How many years you've been doing comedy? Fifteen, at least over fifteen. Wow. Like seventeen. Wow. Yeah. I think one time I gave you a joke. I don't know if people know Sheba Mason, besides being an amazing person of her own and, and, a, and, a, and a comedian, she is the daughter of Jackie Mason. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first met you and someone told me you were that, I said, oh, wow. Because I used to have this joke that whenever you begin doing comedy and you're Jewish, back in the day, everybody would always try to see how they could connect you to Jackie <laughs> Mason. I used to call the six degrees of Jackie Mason. He goes, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm doing stand-up. You're doing stand-up? My brother knows the cousin of the doorman that works in his building. <laughs> I could call him and try to get you to, to get to him. I use that when I do synagogues to so, this yeah, day. Yeah. So, so you're literally like you're zero degrees of separation. You are literally the daughter of Jackie Mason. And then... Leo said we need to just tell the audience who Jackie Mason is. I, of course, know him. and You know him. The younger people and not people who aren't Jewish might not know who Jackie Mason is. So how do we describe to the world what Jackie Mason was? Gosh, that's a really good question that we didn't discuss yesterday when we were preparing for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what would you, uh, I would say that he's like a... Um, a uh, pioneer, in a way, okay. of Jewish comedy, even though it's not only Jewish. I mean, there's plenty of Gentiles that love him. He, he can perform for the queen as well as the commoner, you know? Right. Perform performed for the queen of the, England. The, right, she did, yeah. And he says, the queen is not too crazy about me. <laughs> right. He's, he, uh, you yeah. know, like a founder of, of, like, studying Jews versus Gentiles. I would say that he definitely carved a niche for himself in that. Right. Um, he, a legend. Okay, so let's do basic back in the day. Jackie Mason was born he into, a Hasidic, into, a, into a rabbinical family, and his brothers um, were all rabbis, and he began to be a comedian, and he was a Borscht Belt comedian at first. Right. But the top of the line. Yes. The Borscht Belt community, people don't know what that is. It's the, in the Catskill Mountains. There were all these hotels um, from probably the 30s to deep into the uh, 90s even. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and they, um, they had comedians that were um, working nonstop. There was a one hotel, and all the comedians were in that hotel. And each hotel had three shows. You had the early show, the, regular, the main show, and then you had the, the late show. So in one night, you can go and pick up three different shows. And these were comedians that were making a living, mm -hmm. making a living, putting their kids through college uh, by doing this without having any television credits. Now, the top of the line of those, the top of the line was Jackie Mason, Alan King, and all those that broke out from that, too. Um, just to, to uh, I do want to get to you. I don't want to talk to harp too much about him, but go ahead. Well, when he was a <coughs> rabbi, um, you know, he would be really funny. You know, when he was on the dais, like, and, you know, he would be, like, very funny. And then he realized, I really like being funny more than I enjoy being a rabbi. How long yeah. was he a rabbi for? A um, few years, some time. For whatever it's worth, just to answer the question, the New York Times says Jackie Mason turned fetching into comedy gold. That's if a really you good want, quote. Like, a concise. Well, that's the New York Times said that I was the next Jackie Mason. I know. So, yeah. so the New York Times is a whole. Okay, but I want to just get <laughs> back to. I want to just get back to, and then go into you. Maybe you are. You're, we, you're the guest. Okay. Uh, but I just want to build this up, and 
interject wherever you can. <clears throat> he then had television appearances, and uh, I've watched all of them. And then in 1967, the, uh, there was this thing called the, the, the Ed Sullivan Show. And to describe that to any millennial today or to anybody, you can't. It's a, it was a television show that the entire, all of America would sit down and watch, which doesn't happen. There's not one thing that everybody's watching at the same time anymore. And if you had an appearance on that, you were gold. That mm -hmm. was that was then you can book any comedy room, any theater, and they, you know, as seen on the Ed Sullivan show, Jackie Mason, boom. Jackie Mason was on this show and um, he was on a few times actually, right? He was later on, um, like to apologize. Okay. Uh, well yeah. well he was apologized too. Right. right. He was apologized too. So Jackie right, so right. so tell me if I got okay. the story straight and um, <laughs> And Sounds like you should tell her if she has the stories. Too. No, I got a lot of this. I mean, you have to understand, this is one of my heroes we're talking about. Yeah. So he did the Ed Sullivan show. And um, the only way you can describe the Ed Sullivan show is imagine Kim Kardashian is giving you a plug, straight straight a plug. <laughs> right, on her Instagram. Modi is yeah. the funniest yeah. comedian. Go see all of his yeah. shows, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On her Instagram. Yeah. That's the only way you can even describe the Ed Sullivan show. And now you... now. What happened? He's on the show, and... Well, um, so you know when you're a comedian and you're about to be on a talk show and you work so hard to like get your exact five minutes down, you know, you're working on it. So he knew exactly what he was going to do on that show, and he was in the middle of his routine, and um, they were waving to him to stop, and he wasn't sure... Well, tell him why they were waving to him to stop. Because the president had to make an, uh, an emergency address, Lyndon Johnson. So Lyndon Johnson called the Ed Sullivan show to hold the show. Wow. That's yeah. the power of that show. Wow. Because yeah. Lyndon Johnson was going to go announce the war wow, in that's Vietnam. A really good Is that point. not insane? Yeah. Yeah, that's insane because that's how they could tell the most amount of people. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I never thought about that. So actually. now here he is doing his set and he's probably a minute or two in. Right. And you know you you get everything so planned out yeah. perfect, yeah. you know. And they start waving him to get off and he was so confused. He was he couldn't understand what was going on, you know. So they were waving and making all sorts of gestures with their fingers, and he just went like this. Oh, that's his. And it was misconstrued for the finger. But say that so that the listeners can hear. What did he do? He, he just kind of thumbed his nose. Like he, he put his thumb on his nose and waved like, yeah. his fingers. Like, a, like, like joking. A yeah, because yeah. like, you know? he was watching them do it, and he goes, oh, okay, back to you guys. Like, kind of like <laughs> yeah. off, off. Playful, off the cuff. Playful, yeah. right. He really was confused. He really right. didn't know what was going on. And then Ed Sullivan. Took it as this. As the finger. Oh, that's. But as, how, how do you, I don't understand how you mix this up with that. Okay. But, or, or why he couldn't explain himself. I mean, and that, right, right, right. And that one little tiny thing, like, made him one of the first victims of cancel culture. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So Ed Sullivan then called any place that was that had him booked and said, "Unbook him." You right? believe that? Yeah. Could you imagine? So you have like, wow, you have all these bookings all lined up. You're about to do the show to plug, and that's it. You know, that was it. Ed how Sullivan was even more powerful than like Johnny Carson. Like no. how, really how old was Jackie Mason at that? Like Hilarious. In, in it's so funny that she tried to use Johnny Carson as something to describe what uh, the audience doesn't know who that <laughs> oh, <yeah>. is either. <laughs> um, you know, jo and Johnny Carson, if you did, a, you did a few minutes on his show, it was great too, but it wasn't that. Was Ed Sullivan, that was it. You were sealed Ed. as a performer. Wait, done. Was he the original, like, I don't know, Letterman? Like, is that a way? He wasn't a talk show. Ed Sullivan was a, it was... Uh, a, ver a variety, variety yeah. show. So there's a singer, a comedian, a, a ventriloquist, a magician, it's amazing. and that was it. And now you saw him on the Ed Sullivan show. You want to see this live in a theater next to right. you. So he was canceled. He was yeah. canceled, and then devastated. Devastated. Okay. I mean, and how could old you was he? Being in his, in his like early thirties at this point. Probably. And Probably. he was really cute when he was in his 30s, you know. And um, <laughs> he was I thought he was cute later on, too. But um, so I did a lot of other women, <laughs> okay. which we're going to get yeah, to, which yeah. we're going to get to. But but so he was he w that he had that moment. And then two years later, Ed Sullivan actually apologized. But it was kind of too late. Two even years it took him to apologize? But still, even though he apologized, it's not it's not Twitter. It was a different era. 
Yeah. Sounds a it little a bit. I didn't know this story. It sounds a little bit like Kathy Griffin with the Trump head. Mm. Mm. Okay, or not, no. or it doesn't sound at all like that. No, nothing because nothing much really because happened. Because the to her. ones that are so anti-Trump were her fans and yeah. got behind her. There's no fans to get behind. There's no, okay. There was nobody that was anti Ed Sullivan. So th- okay. it's what Ed Sullivan said. Anyway, um, two years later, Ed Sullivan apologized, and it didn't help. It, it didn't, really didn't help. It didn't much. help. Wow. He still wasn't getting bookings, and it was like, wow. And he was like really at the top of his game at that point, and it set him back literally, kind of like t- almost twenty years. Yeah. Before he really got big again. So I feel like one of the things that you guys aren't saying, and maybe this isn't accurate, but my understanding was that one of the things that made Jackie Mason so unbelievable that he was really the first quote unquote really Jewish stand up comic that like really embraced that in a way that nobody else ever had. I will tell you watching his material from earlier days, it wasn't that Jewish. Okay, interesting. Anything that came out of his mouth was, he could have done brownie recipes. Yeah. The way he delivered it was Jewish. Yes. It wasn't, it wasn't material like in his big show. So let's just continue with the timeline because the, the, the timeline of the whole thing is really what, what I want to get to. So then Jackie Mason goes on the road and then later on and in 1984 or four or seven or six, he had his show. That was about 87, because it was like right when I, it's either late, eight, no, it was late 86. It was like, I was, he actually opened his show, ironically enough, on my birthday, December 15th. Your birth. Day. The Not, day of no, your birth, no, like or a, your, a year later? Like either, it was, it was either a year, or two, I think it was two years later. Two years later yeah. or a year later? Two years. It was two years later. Was the opening of the show yeah. on your actual birthday? Yeah. Okay. I think that was just a coincidence. Okay. And then this show, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot explain to you what this show was. Now we just get to the show, and then we're going to go to you. The show oh my God. was a Broadway show of a stand-up comedian doing stand-up on Broadway. Was he the first one to do that? He was the first one to do it. Yeah. It blew. I've, s- I've read interviews. Like Rodney Dangerfield was infuriated. They always had In a rivalry. Rivalry. It w- here <laughs> he is, this guy, with nothing on stage nothing and just hits the mic walks out his his biggest laugh probably is the walk to the mic <laughs> just the way he walked was just and his syntax i cannot explain this to you so now here we are it's i'm i'm in my i'm a bar mitzvah boy i'm whatever i was and we used to go see this show once a month and wow. it was the same material and we used to have in the car the tape Wow. And it played over and over. We knew his act by heart. Wow. Something that makes me always happy and proud is when people imitate my act. Like all the wait staff at the comedy cell go, Modi, from one of the bits I do. So when I go there, Modi, and you know, this little Eric Newman always does my act. Mm-hmm. The entire world, the entire Jewish world walked around from 1986, seven, seven to whenever the end of the show. Talking like Jackie Mason. I want you to go here. You should know there. Would you tell you? Another one here. <laughs> the whole world. My uncles, my mother, my. Everyone would just that. I don't know. Do you know? I know. I don't know. Do, do, do. <laughs> we all spoke like Jackie Mason. It was. And went to see him over and over. He had a guest in town. Let's go see Jackie Mason. We had wow. a boom. Two, 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 two times a month. It was just such an amazing show. And it blew him up out of nowhere. And he, and it was just amazing. It was amazing. His take on the world, you're listening to the way a Jewish mind thinks about whatever the topics are. Now we're here. Now. Two years before the show, he has a daughter. <laughs> who's in the Sorry. studio, who's in the studio with us now. And now, now the the world. Leo, did I do a good enough job explaining what Jackie Ma- who Jackie Mason was? Okay, that was you. pretty amazing. Thank yeah, you. it was really so amazing. Okay, and we have definitely we have a <laughs> full. We we're trying to keep this as an hour, but we definitely have now plenty of time to delve into you <laughs> and your amazing story. So here he is, Jackie Mason, who had never been. Now he was a womanizer. There was he nothing was. to say. I've known guys who who hung in his in his um, 
entourage. His entourage. Bruce Smear. Bruce Smear. Some, sometimes when you hang out with other comics, you hear stories about bigger comedians. Jackie Mason's stories were amazing. I mean, I, I, I want you to know that I had an opportunity to meet him a few times and sit at a table with him. And it's like a comic, another comic. He, he's not looking for help from me. He's not looking, he, didn't do, he didn't do opening acts. He went out there raw and did his own show. And then he, I wasn't into that whole entourage thing. Not, not my scene. And I didn't push to, hey, when's he having dinner again? Let's go again, let's go again, let's go. I wasn't. Good it's for a, you. It's a hero, and I want to keep my heroes. I don't want to know about their personal lives and all that. But he was on the prowl all the time. All with the women. time. <laughs> Shmi- Shmirnov told me he would have, like, he would, he would send Shmirnov to go tell this girl, that girl, this, you know, and whatever. And. And okay, that's his thing. That's he always thing. had like a schlep along guy. The guy is named schlep along. Like it's, you know. A schlep. You know, a schlep along. Came on. He sends them to go over and talk to women like at a deli here. Go tell them, which is how he met. You told me that's how he met yeah. your mother. Tell me the story of how he met your mother. So my mother had moved to Florida just three days ago. Okay. And she was uh, sitting at Wolfie's Delicatessen in Miami Beach. Three days before he met her, not three days ago. Right, three okay. days before he met her, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. And so um, I'm, I'm, you know, in past tense. Okay. But uh, so she had just moved there and she was sitting in Wolfie's and Colin, on Colin, you know, Collins Avenue yes. in Miami Beach. Sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. Every Jew knows that area. Okay. So, uh, you know, where the Fountain Blue is and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So she's sitting there having a pastrami sandwich with her mother and a guy comes over to the table, a schlep along guy. His name was Willie at the time, John Willie. So he sends her over to the table. He says, do you want to meet Jackie Mason? And my mother says to her, her mother, who's Jackie Mason? And my, uh, my grandmother was a typical Jewish mother. She goes, Jackie Mason, he's my favorite comedian. Of course she would. Come on. So, so what's the year now? What year are we in? 1977. Okay, now you have to understand that 1977 in Miami, Collins Avenue, there were a whole bunch of hotels, the Eden Rock, the Fountain, blah, 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 blah. And they all had a show. And there was now all the Jews had moved in there. A lot of survivors were there. A lot of old Jews were down there already. The, the kind of the Catskill moved over there, and there were shows. And Jackie, but not just Jewish, Sinatra, all of those, uh, Dean Martin, uh, um, Sammy Davis Jr. They were all doing shows. But Jackie Mason was a show down there. And this is you know he's building his career back, and so everybody knew who he was. Except your mother. You're really good at exposition. Huh? Well, yeah. I'm, we, we, have, we have a topic in the studio <laughs> that I'm super jacked about. So what can I talk about? Yeah, so go <laughs> ahead. Good. Um, and so how old's your mom at this point? She's in her 20s. If I can't tell you how exactly how old. Okay. But she was in her 20s. Really, really, really pretty. You know. And um, so, so my grandmother says, "Of course she wants to meet Jackie Mason. Come on." So they they bring her over to the table, and he says, "So how long are you in Miami for?" And my grandmother answers. She goes, we just may have here three days ago, Jackie. Let me tell you, I love your act, and I'm a great fan of yours. And he goes, thank you, thank you. You're no dummy. And then he <laughs> says, uh, so what do you do for a living? And my, mother, and my grandmother answers. She goes, my daughter is a teacher of the hearing impaired who belly dances on the side. And he said, she must also be a ventriloquist. I ask her a question, it comes out of your mouth. So and like this whole scene, I, this is word for word. This whole my mother wrote a play called the Jackie Mason Musical, which is a musical comedy with a whole cast of eight, and it's a really funny. And this whole scene is like depicted in the play word for word. That's exactly what happened. You wow! Know? And oh, it really also had, the incident about the finger at the at Sullivan yeah. show. There's a whole song about that in in the show. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it really you know, and it's um you know it explains the whole Ed Sullivan thing in a really you know ad- adorable way and the song is good and you know stuff like that so but here um, we are so now Jackie Mason meets your mother yeah and she okay. really didn't know you know how kids in their 20s are just like kids in their 20s then they're like kids in their 20s now you know they don't really know you know about a lot of stuff and you Hilarious know he wasn't that you, let me let me stop <laughs> that right away are you out of your mind yeah. did you just say that <laughs> kids in the 20s there are like kids in the 20s now are you insane Today, if you came over to the table, hey, there's a celebrity there that wants to meet you. The Today 20 would Google the crap out of this person and That's know true. more about him than he knows about himself. Yeah, but, but my nieces who are like in their very early 20s, they're friends. Like I've been around them. They don't know who Mick Jagger is. And you got to remember, he was not a celebrity anymore. He right. really he wasn't. Was just, yeah. uh, he was like, he uh-huh. was... People Almost a husband at that point. Chasson, but he was a he was um <laughs> he was a, 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 a comedian. Not a has been. What does it's that a, mean, Modi? What did forbid. you just say? It wasn't a has been. 
It's like saying it, it's not a real watch. It, it's a real watch. It tells time. He was a comedian. He was performing every night, making yeah. people laugh. He wasn't a huge. He wasn't Milton Berle. He wasn't because of that. It's all because of that. Right. It's yeah. but he was a comedian. Wasn't a has been. He right. performed. Sure, but he and, wasn't like a big star where you okay. could, you know. But um, in fact. My mother was driving him around Miami Beach looking for a place to perform, and he was like, he was doing shows at the Newport Hotel in the Colonial Inn, ten dollars a ticket at that point. Right, you know? right. So okay, so she now <laughs> is hanging out with Jackie Mason, you, your mother. Yeah. And. And so they, you know, they start dating, and it was she fell in love with him almost immediately. You know, he's older than she is, obviously. A lot older, almost like thirty years older. Oh wow. Yeah, but she has her own daddy issues. But she, so he was like, <laughs> what, 50 at that point? Uh, yeah, he was like 50. Yeah. So this is 20 years after the Ed Sullivan He might have even incident. been older than, he was a little older than 50. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, so now she's hanging with him, and she is watching him perform, so she's smitten. Really and smitten. And obviously, and um, side story, I know one time, uh, this is a side, side story right now, I know one time, and our next guest, by the way, is Arnold Graham, who used to book the Catskills. Mm. I remember one time somebody told me that Jackie Mason picked up a girl, and she, he just couldn't get to her, and he hired a driver to bring him to the Catskills, he showed up at the Catskills, and there was a com comic that was going on, and um, and he told the comic, "You'll get paid. I'm gonna do the show." Put her <sighs> in the front row, did the show, blew her mind away. Obviously, watched she watched an entire room of probably a thousand people just go fall in love with this man. And uh, okay, side so, so, sorry. So now we're back to your mother. She your mother. Substantially younger than Jackie Mason, driving him around. They were dating, and then, and like they were together ten years. But of course, he was still seeing other people on the side. Like you know, your six degrees of Jackie Mason joke he gave right. me. Right. I have another version of that. Like whenever I do a show, somebody always comes over to me and says, "You know, my sister's cousin's husband's daughter went out with your father or stooped your father." You mm -hmm. know, uh, all the time that okay. happens. So he was seeing other people on the side. But my mother likes to say she was like his harem favorite. You know, she kind of like understood his what favorite harem favorite. Harem. 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 You know, like how King Solomon had I know had what a harem. harem. I, I, thought, I, 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 thought, I thought it was called harem. Ha harem. H-H-A. Doesn't matter. Weiter, your story, continue. <laughs> okay. So uh, she was his harem favorite. Right. Okay. So they were seeing a lot of each other, you know. Okay. And, um, you know, but, it, you know. Did, did they mo move in together? No, he doesn't do that. Right, you know? okay. He doesn't really do that. Even with his so-called wife who he later married his manager later who we still there were no absolutely no witnesses at the wedding okay um he never even really lived with her they have separate apartments okay. you know he's okay. like one of you know he's a comedian to one of those typical comics where they just never really get close to anyone not typical but <laughs> that comedian okay um okay so they're okay, together so 10 years so together 10 years and then they have Sorry. then they have sheba mason right so they have me and um he always did say that he never wanted children. He always says, my job takes me on the road too much and it's not fair for a kid. And that's also in the play. And so uh, they have me. And he was really cute with me um, the first year or so. You know, like he would run over to the stroller and say, oh, our baby makes other babies look retarded. And like oh. I had really, really fat arms, which you can't say now. I know. I'm sorry if that's uh, politically incorrect. He said it. I didn't say it, guys. And he's, he's dead, so he can't get canceled. Yeah. That's true. You can cancel him now. Cushion <laughs> Tuchas cancel him. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I had like really, really fat, cute arms as a baby. Like, and then he said it looks like rubber bands. You know, it was like really Aww. cute. You know, um, but um, not so cute when you get older. Anyway, I <laughs> do a lot of weight lifting. But anyway, so um, uh, so then um, he did have a, a manager who was also she had he had known her long before my ma my mother and um, his her parents put a lot of money into his projects at the time like a movie that really was I think it was called the stoolie and it was not a, a success but um, she was his manager and she had a lot of mind control over him and the minute he had a baby she really insisted that he like completely sever the ties with my mother and he had his brother who my mother knew his family they really liked her um, his, his brother called her up and said it's over. Wow. Yeah. So, and then, he, okay, but then you still connected with him later. Okay, so, 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 so now Jackie Mason has a daughter, uh, the manager, um, 
Which we could say the name, I guess. No? Or not. Let's leave it out. Don't, don't say the name. He had a manager. We could. I no, mean, no, 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 she might it. kill me after. No, who cares? <laughs> she can also kiss in Tuchus. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> but but uh, she now says to him, uh, do not deal with this kid. And um, one thing that you should just know right now, his success began with that Broadway show, which was two yeah. years after you were born. And the show aired on on um on your birthday yeah and i want to tell you that you know in the torah and the talmud and all and any probably any religion they say children bring you blessing wow i know many comedians who after they had it that's when they had their success and all that Mm. interesting i i don't know if you can handle this but could you imagine that's because of you is why he had the success on broadway wow giving birth to you bringing you into the world and bringing your aura into the world and the gift that you are, Sheba Mason, is what gave him his success. Just process that, work on it later on, <laughs> but I promise you that that's something there. Aww. So now um, he's not in touch with you. He has his show. It was a run that was three, four years. Yeah. It was on another level, another level. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen this show, Take some time, Google it. It's The World According to Me by Jackie Mason. You're um, two years old. The show runs. He ch- tries to do other shows. They were n- You couldn't top it, period. But he you did have seven more. He had seven more, which were yeah. not great. I saw wow. them all. Really? I saw them all. They, they were not great. Speaking of my deciding they were not great, there's one story that you told me that blew me away yesterday. Before a show hits Broadway, it has to go on somewhere else. Oh, yes, yes, yes. To tell the story. So you workshop your show somewhere else, like maybe in a smaller theater. And like so he did it in L.A. And the exact same show, The World According to Me. And uh, it got really bad reviews. From who? I believe it was the, was it the um, L.A. Times? Okay, the right? L.A. Times gave Jackie Mason's The World According to Me a bad review. Really bad, scathing. Right. And, um, which which prevents you from going to Broadway. I had a role. I, I, I doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter. I was in some Broadway thing once that I didn't get the role, and it went to San Francisco. It played there, and it was the reviews were unwatchable, and they <laughs> it didn't go to Broadway. And I was thank God I didn't get that role. But anyway, so now here is Jackie Mason, the, <laughs> the, 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 the L.A. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Um, Jackie Mason's in L.A. with the show. It gets bad reviews. And what happens? So uh, Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks were like, this is ridiculous. Pause. Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks. <laughs> it's the so funny. We have to explain. bar <laughs> of comedy. The bar of comedy, ladies and gentlemen, the youngins that are listening to this. There's nothing funnier than these two men. They've written things that today no one can come near. Nothing. Ahead of their times, beyond. So these two men now, what do they do? The, the, the bar that has been set and never been reached again in comedy, the two men now see a bad review about Jackie Mason, and what do they do? They take out a huge ad um, disclaiming that review. Oh, wow. Yep, didn't see that coming. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Insanity. And then That's they helped launch the Broadway show. Yeah, yeah. which which was the Broadway, which was amazing. It was a real tribute to his talent. It I was mean, v- like... Yeah, wow, wow, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Like, you know, you just can't, you can't describe it. It's, um, uh, um, you see people shine in wherever the, you know, like, Comedians that shine, they're good and stuff. All of a sudden, they have a podcast and they're amazing at podcasts, or they're amazing at doing a talk show host, or they're ama- you've never seen anybody shine like Jackie Mason on a Broadway sh- stage. Now back to you. So he's now doing the show. You're <laughs> how you're two years old. The show finishes. He's now just doing dates. He's running around doing you know for money. And how mm-hmm. do I know for money? I'll tell you how I know for money. I lived in L.A. between O. 07 and 08 and one time he canceled last minute on a gig he did two nights in a theater and he was supposed to do this charity for the Chabad Cheder of uh, this Jewish organization in in LA Uh, uh, they had separate seating at that event believe me it was a blessing in disguise for them that they didn't bring him because by then he was already schmutzy yeah 
he, mm, yeah. which we'll talk about in a minute, yeah. but they, he canceled and they called me literally at 4 p.m. I'm on a treadmill. They <laughs> said, we need a comedian for tonight. And that got me into that whole world. Oh, in that's that. Wow, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. It was an amazing. And, um, so see, you were a blessing for Modi, too. Yeah, wow. So so, so like now, the giving tree. Right, what so is <laughs> what does schmutzy mean, Modi? Dirty. Like he was, it was incredible. Jackie Mason never cursed. And then later on, yeah. he started using the F word and the S word and, and being so political. My mother saw like a whole, like a bunch of Orthodox Jews walk out on him. Once, mm -hmm. Like, because he was too dirty. But yeah. you know, you have to be very clean for them. But he was, you know. And he did it so well to clean. And then he later on, he just like he did his political views and and which no one cares about. And um, it doesn't matter. So so now, but back to you. So, so now, how old are you at this point? How are you? Now, so when did you get back in touch with him? <coughs> um. Ne ne <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> no, you told me you no. you ran into him. I did. You, I've run into him. So when I was eight, so okay, so he paid child support, okay, and we were all over the newspaper, um, and like all you know, we did shows like Current Affair and Entertainment Tonight, my mother and I and stuff. And she was, you know, she was like genuinely really heartbroken. Like she really just missed him. You know, it wasn't about anything else except you know what it's like. It's in your, it's in your book, you know. I missed your father too. <laughs> 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 you also dated Jackie Mason. Wait, that's a I whole wouldn't episode. be surprised. Oh, Miles, we, 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 we need the room for one more hour. I had no idea you dated Jackie Mason. Wow. Okay. Never did mind. You? <coughs> oh. No, did oh. you? She's like confirming. It's not so impossible. <laughs> it's not impossible. It's not impossible. <laughs> it's not impossible. It's really not impossible. But it's Eric, almost like it's Eric, easier to find people who haven't dated him. Eric Newman told me he saw Jackie Mason walking into his lobby with a girl like literally a third his age. Yeah. You know, but yeah. so it's not impossible. But okay, so go ahead. You. So then, um, I met him uh, briefly when I was eight years old. You know, and I went I went to see his show at the Broward Center Performing Arts, and we went backstage. Which I was at uh, a few weeks ago. Wow. Really? Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was an amazing show. It was insane. It seats a few thousand, right? It, no, no. It's, uh, you really? You had to do that? You had to go there? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 can I know how to seat 600 and something? And uh, it was, it was yes. But go ahead. So he was. And in what that was theater. your mother telling you this whole time? Like, what was the ex like? What was your experience of? Okay, that's a good question. So I had my mother and my grandmother at this point, right? My grandmother was like a father to me. I even say my act like she that's even had hysterical. the beard. Oh my god, that is so <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god is that on your act yeah i hope so yeah, it really is. Funny. It is. oh yeah. my god okay <laughs> but um so you know i think you know they felt that it was important that i grew up knowing who you are you have to know your roots i was i saw his videos I, I was you know very much privy to who he was um i didn't of course you don't fully comprehend much when you're between the ages of three four five sure so. but um i remember like going on these talk shows and they would ask me questions about my father and i'm like i don't know can i just go color like i didn't you know i didn't really wow. know okay. fully understand but then i got to where i understood when i really saw him perform live in front of a lot of people um and i'm actually my parents were not married and i'm actually uh you, you, I'm technically not considered a bastard because you have to be married to other people. Your parents both have to be married, to, which is weird because everybody always says, there goes that little bastard. But uh, oh. yeah, that's in my act. The, they, they say it to me all the time, too, and my parents were married when they had me. Huh. Nothing? <laughs> Hello? Anybody? No. Is this on? No, I right. if you want to go, well. <laughs> we're here <well>. all week. <clears throat> Anyways, no, so acor according to Jewish religion, a bastard is that y you're not a bastard. Right. It's not, yeah. Right. A mamzer. It's a mamzer. It's a... We're not doing that now. Oh, that's a whole other. I, I, I have a whole thing with. I her. mean, I would, what I would is have going to, on? Go on. Go on. Go I like that you're little Yiddish sprinkling. No, I, I, I'm thinking. Do I want to go into <laughs> it? But then I gotta like I gotta explain it to to Perry. Because I'm no, like, but it's there are half the people listening are like, what's a mamzer? Mamzer, okay. actually. Mamzer. Yeah. Go ahead. You're Jewish, aren't you? No, no. Please. Oh. I, I want to <laughs> hear about you. I want to <laughs> hear about. Okay, so here you are, Jackie Mason's daughter. You're figuring out. Wow, that's my dad. Right. Wow. Okay. And what's happening now? But you know, it's also I didn't experience a sense of loss of him right ever. because when you're when you're only right. like two you know you don't really have much of a memory right so I, I never felt like that sense of loss all I knew is that my mother was sad all the time and I, right. you know Whoa. and like so anyway so 
I met him briefly when I was eight, and he was very tender. And he said, like when we were backstage, he goes, "Yo, you look just like your mother," you know. Then fast forward, I saw a show again um, when I, I, you know, I had written letters over the years, but I really feel that his manager and Raoul Felder, whose name I'm not afraid to name, his attorney, like they kind of like really sort of like I feel like I, like any letter I wrote, you know, bef- this didn't is, even get to him, didn't even maybe not get to wow. him, or you know, got lost in translation somehow, and there was a little bit of brainwashing going on. And so, um, anyway, meanwhile, I'm taught by my mother and grandmother to absolutely harbor no resentment. Don't be resentful. Be really excited that you're Jackie Mason's daughter. He's a legend. He's so he's such a genius. This is so exciting that you have his gene pool. Wear it like it's a like it's a perfume. You know, like right. you That's know, like beautiful. not that you're nothing without it, but that this is so much fun. Oh, yeah. Don't harbor any resentment. He's you know he it's he just is what he is. Okay. Right. And so. Um, that's you know, incredible, though. I mean, for somebody to be able to do that and to infuse that yeah, they into really a child. Me. Oh, yeah. my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I grew up really like more excited than anything, you know, okay. um, about it. So then when I was um, I mean, to give you an example of just how creepy his people are. OK, this is why I don't really put the onus on him. I put it more on them. When I was um, 18 and I moved to New York City and I was 19, I, I got a job working as a waitress at a comedy club. And they, um, his people heard that I got the job and they said, we really prefer it if you didn't hire her. As a waitress. Wow. Just as a waitress, <coughs> right? Wow. And what club was it? It was New York Comedy Club at the time. Oh, my God. Yeah. They cared that much? Yeah, they cared that much that I was making a living. I mean, child support ended when I was 18. I was going to college, like, you know, not a really fancy school, but Baruch College. Baruch College. It's not not fancy school, it's a decent school. It's Baruch a school. Hashem. Okay, yeah. so so then <laughs> it is so a better you, name than you would than, uh, than you're, you're, the college you're, actually you're, is. You're 18, living in the city. Jackie Mason's living in the city. Your father, Jackie Mason's living in the city, and now you run into him. Right. So I run into. So I then I got. I had a series of like little jobs. So I got a job bartending the Broadway theaters, which is nice because you get to see the shows for free. So I was uh, working at Spam a lot. He had yet another Broadway show going on at the Helen Hayes Theater. I think right. it was called Freshly Squeezed, maybe. Yeah. Um, so then I'm, I'm coming out and I see him, he's like near his limo and he says, I said, hello. And he goes, hello, who are you? And I said, you know, your daughter. And he goes, oh, hello. You know, really friendly. And he says, you know, I want you to come to my show tomorrow at 7 PM and the show starts at eight. And so he says, come, we'll sit, we'll talk it over. Right. So I'm like really excited. And then he goes, if for some reason, cause he knows he goes, if for some reason they don't let you in, here's my address. Come to my house. Right. Wow. So then I start to take out a pen to write down his address. Cause you know, it was before iPhones and, um, uh, he goes, don't write it down. He goes, Jill's parents are standing right there. Right. Don't write it down. So he's like still, his, like, his manager's parents yeah. were standing there. So they were watching this. Yeah. Okay. He goes, don't write it down. <coughs> So that shows just how much of, you know, like he was kind of always living in fear of these people, you know, and you see it a little bit in other movies and stuff like Elton John had a creepy person that he was always kind of like, you know, anyway, so let's stick to Jackie. Okay, so um, Elton Elton John's next week. It just seems like it it happens with celebrities (laughs) a lot. Elton John's daughter's on (laughs) next week. Right now we have Jackie Mason's daughter on. Go ahead. So now. So did you go see him? Yeah, so I went to his show. And the next day, my mother was like, don't get too excited. I was so, you know, I'm young, Aww. I'm naive. Oh. Right, so I go to the show, and sure enough, there's a letter waiting for me, like a, a reason why I can't come in. I don't even know if he knows I showed up. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Yeah. Okay, and then did you go s- to see him in his house? Yep, nothing. And then, like, you know, the doorman was like, I went. I even have a joke. I'm like, I went to his house. They told me he moved. <laughs> okay. You know, <coughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I'm like, it's funny that you say he moved when he was just see, you know, but anyway, whatever. So I didn't push okay. and I don't, you know, I don't want to keep pushing and pushing and sending letters and trying and trying. I mean, wow. he is a grown man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So whether or not these, you know, I mean, they, you know, he was able to sneak women. Why can't he sneak his kid? Right. So, um, uh, so then, you know, the years go by and I had, I have, you know, I found a place on 56th street. I guess I shouldn't give my exact address. And no, he, don't. he was on 57th Street. Right. But it wasn't like I deliberately did that. It was like I really looked all over the city. I looked in the East Village. I just couldn't. I wanted like, 
you know, I, there were all these like walk ups with, you know, I just couldn't find anything. And so I found New this, York. you know, and I like my, I really like my building. I'm still, I'm still over there. Okay. Anyway, so he would always sit by the Applejack Diner. And one time I had a, you know, like in front, he loves sitting outside because he loves fanfare, even he in loves Miami. Being, he loves being recognized. Yeah. He loves to be <coughs> recognized, you know, which is fun. I understand that. So, um, and he would be really funny with people and stuff. And like um, one time I had a joke published in the New York Post where I say, I, sometimes I wish a better looking comedian was my father, like Woody Allen or Rosie O'Donnell. Ha! <laughs> and <laughs> okay. Thanks. Um, and so he, uh, so one time I tried to approach him, but he goes, you bitch, this is who you compare me to, a fat yet to like Rosie O'Donnell and a schmuck like Woody Allen. I'm like, it's a joke. It's oh, a wow. joke. I said, you could help me write a new joke. He goes, get away from me, you know, and he even said like, you know, F you, you know. Wow. Really? So after wow. that, I was just kind of like, forget wow. it. It's kind of like, are you going to keep chasing a, a, like an ex lover? But no. you also told me that his father was horrible to yes. him. Yeah. Oh, I, we, I just follow you from podcast to podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> everywhere I go, she's on the podcast. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> no, he. So he was a rabbi, and they grew up very, very religious, right. as you know. And so, in order to become a comedian, his father was very upset, just like the jazz singer movie, which. Yeah. And so he had to like sever a tie, right? He just right. had to like block out any emo. He loved his father, and uh, he just had to like break that emotional tie. And uh, just do what he felt he had to do for his life, you know? And you did the same. And you did the same, no? You severed, you, you fuck, enough. Okay, so he's my father. Oh, yeah. I don't need to be a part of his life. But I'm I feel like he was able to do that with his yeah, kid. Yeah, that of. was more that the was thing. Because I was saying to Sheba, like, she has such an incredibly, like, beautiful and kind and, I mean, really very, like, Buddha take on Thanks. the whole thing. It's no, I mean it's incredible. It 100%, really is. Yes. Um, I have to attribute that to the way I was raised. Yeah, though. I know. You've said that to before. your mother. Yeah. When your mother told because you Because they really don't... indoctrinate you when you're a kid. Right. You know? She yeah. could have said fight for him yeah. and get money from him and, and he's get disgusting yeah. and, and he's how could disgusting, he do that? But, yeah. but they didn't. They, the they way didn't bitter go. parents often So do. your mom is amazing. Your mom yeah. is an absolute uh your mom's a saint. Like it's, totally. it's amazing. Yeah. But also that would he did was terrible to her but she was saying that part of why like to be able to do that to a kid like i know you don't like it when i curse but it's like really fucked up and she was saying that you know but his father did the same thing to, to him. him right so it's it was like almost like he kind of untrained his brain yeah. to like or rewired his brain you can like, understand you can have a little bit more empathy for somebody doing something like that because you, you know. can just sever a tie really yeah. easily. Right. Yeah. And now, what are you now? So that's you. That's your whole thing, your father. And now you are. Now you. Now you. What are you up to? What are you? <laughs> the daughter of Jackie Mason, but not like. In a way, it's also good. Do you know? Like I always see. So I always. I've met kids who. Uh, I've met John Lennon's son. Mm -hmm. I don't know his name, because he's John Lennon's son. And if he cured cancer tomorrow and won the lottery and built the next Facebook, he'll always be John Lennon's son. Ja you Jackie Mason's daughter, but you, you don't have to ride that. You can go on your own. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to mention that to anybody because it's you know what I'm saying it's like it's kind of it's it's not it's it's a it's a past that people today might not know who he is. So you don't have to ride that. You can Thanks. go you can go weeks and weeks dating somebody and then at the end hit them. <laughs> By the way, my dad was a comedian. Oh, really? Like a like what? Like like Chris Rock? Nah, a little different. He was uh, <laughs> he was uh, a Jewish. -y, but so it's not. It doesn't <laughs> define you. I don't think Jackie being Jackie Mason's daughter defines you. Well, thanks. I mean, you know, it depends on where you're working. Like if I work at a synagogue or something, I say, you know, they couldn't afford Jackie Mason, so they got me. Okay. <laughs> <But> <laughs> when I'm performing for you know people that are in, in their twenties who have no idea who he is, I don't even mention it. You know. Right. But um. Uh, so for me lately, uh, during the pandemic, like no one had anywhere to go, you know, so I wanted to start a show cause I was like, you know, going crazy like everybody else. And so I found a really cool place to start a show, which is at an Irish pub. It's, uh, it's the top floor and it's, um, half outdoors, half indoors. It's cool. not subjected to the elements. It's like a courtyard and all the comedy seller people had nowhere to go during that time. So they all started doing my show. Like Dan, I mean, even Dan Natterman a little, David Tell comes all the, yeah. you know, he was coming a lot. W and what's then the location of this place? Joe Mackey. It's on, um, 54th and Broadway. And, um, 
I, of course, you have an open invitation. Thank be an you. Honor. Thank Lenny you. Marcus comes. It takes everything I have to go above 14th Street. It absolutely. <laughs> I understand. It takes, but, but I, I will definitely. If you ever want to work out something new. But so then I got to know people like David Tell. And so then he took me to open for him, like, you know, wow. here and there. And I was just at, like, the Paramount Theater in Austin. That's opening awesome, Shiva. And, uh, and Joe Mackey takes me. And uh, it's fun, you know, they all come and, and it's been nice. Like that room has been really nice. I just keep it going What's every it night. called? What's the, plug it. Tell it's them where nice. they keep yeah, it. Yeah, this is it. We're wrapping it up. Oh, let, okay. it, let it, let it, let it, let it go. Get Cheap the amazing. cane. Okay, it's Get called. The <laughs> Get the cane. Get the cane. so old school. What an old reference. <laughs> wow. It's called. <laughs> That's like the light is the new version it's of the, the cane, I guess. Uh, <laughs> at least it's more subtle. Uh, the, the, the name of it is called Sheba Speakeasy at the Three Monkeys. And it's two. 36 West 54th Street and it's every night okay. and we also have the Jackie Mason musical the Jackie Mason musical.com which was written by my mother like I said and it, it's going to be touring again amazing and, and um, you play your mother in it I play my mother oh I love that and she's ama- I heard her sing She, you thanks. maybe have a second calling thanks you have thanks. a great voice I have done a lot of theater you know before I did comedy thank you You're thanks very great. that's really yeah, sweet thanks yeah. And, um, you know, there's, it's it's a very playful show. It's funny. And um, it's, there's songs in it like the early bird special and stuff. And so, you know. The early bird special. Because <laughs> they would always go out to cough from coffee shop to coffee shop. It's right. hysterical. Yeah. And so do you have a, another question that you'd like to ask Shiva? Yes. Um, I always ask everybody, <laughs> who is your rabbi? And by rabbi, not means the guy from your synagogue, but who is your mentor? Well, if you now have a question, be it for comedy, be it for spirituality, be it for anything, who would you go to? Um... <laughs> uh, right now, I don't know. You're you're kind of growing on me. Oh, <laughs> you. You feel free to but call whenever you want or ask whatever you want. <laughs> I noticed that you do some cantorial in your act, and Jackie yeah. does that. You do it like it's you. And you have a beautiful voice, by Thank the way. You. A beautiful voice. I wanted to tell you, but uh, he he actually always did cantorial when he was trying to like <coughs> gather his thoughts. He would just stop and out of the blue, just go, you know. I, I sing all day long in the apartment. You have I a scream, beautiful voice. Scream yeah. Scream in the apartment. Wow. Um, but. Uh, um, I really go. T- I mean, I, 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 if I have, to, I mean, maybe now you, but if I have, if I have to ask a question, David Tell has been really nice about answering a question. I try not to bother him too much, but he's very, very sweet and like and good to other comics, and like yes. he'll he'll tell you um, where he'll point. He's pointed me in directions before, which is really nice. Yes, so. he's a very special person. Yeah. Um, amazing. So <laughs> we have your. So you have. Do you have a uh, Instagram account? Yeah, Sheba Mason. S H E B, like in boy. A M A S O N. Sheba Mason. Yeah. And um, uh, website or anything? Yes, yeah, ShebaMason.com. <laughs> good, good. Funny <laughs> enough. <laughs> and I'm Look sure all that. the information for. What about you? What's going on? I have. Um, a, you know, you can. The show's on Thursdays. You have your show on I Thursday. N- now, so now it's on. We have a show. They're on Tuesdays, Sundays. I have everything's on my Instagram at Periel Ashenbrand. See you next Tuesday. So you're more Tuesday, than welcome the, to stop the by. show, and, cool. um, and I might. I, it's an amazing room to thank just, you. It's to really just fun to go up there and have a little fun. It's really fun. Where um, is it? It's at Stand Up New York. Oh, every cool. Thursdays now. Every Tuesday, Tuesday, and now we play around a little bit because Tuesday's a little bit of you know. But we have one. I it doesn't. I don't know when it's going to air, but we you, you can find them me on Instagram. They're all there at Stand Up New York's website too. Okay, cool. and I have um, wow, I'm Modi. <laughs> and I'm on Modi, Modi <laughs> underscore live on Instagram and ModiLive.com. Both can get you to any show that I have happening. But I have next week. No. Okay, well, this Sunday, this Sunday is a private event. But this, no, we have Stand Up New York. Oh, this won't air before then. Oh, which, by the way, may, maybe you want to come and do f- 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 five minutes over there. Oh, thanks. Sure. Yeah, that. Okay, so we have um, okay, we have hey. December second. I'm at Governor's in Long Island, and then December eighth, I'm in the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles, and and then, ladies and gentlemen, it's beginning to sell hard, and uh, tickets are going to be uh, sold out. The holiday show, the my 
Nittelnacht. My, uh, <laughs> my, uh, I don't. Want, I never call it the Christmas shows. It's not. A, it's a my my holiday show, which is <laughs> on the twenty fifth of December because uh, Friday is the twenty fourth, so the twenty fifth of December at City Winery. I am so psyched. I don't know if you've been there before yet. The venue is absolutely amazing. This year is going to be a super special year. So please get your tickets for the December twenty fifth show. And um, cameos, they've been so much fun lately. And I've been doing these shows, and everybody comes over to me to show me their cameos. Oh, that's and amazing. And they love cameos. So cameo.com slash Modi. Um, you want it as me, Modi, uh, me, me, near the Israeli character, or Yoeli. I'll be happy to do it. And uh, anything else? That's it. I kind of tell you something. My favorite podcast so far. No way. My favorite really? one. I'm so happy you were here. I, am, I feel so... <laughs> I swear to you, I really, uh, there's something, a connection between me and your father, and I, I promise you, I, I, if you walk away from anything here, I promise you your birth was what gave him his second wind of life. Oh, my God. I promise you that. Cry. I promise you that. Um, thank you all for listening, and <laughs> see you soon. We have uh, amazing guests lined up and amazing stuff um, that will already have aired by then. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>